He just jumped in the water. When Alja Griffin's father, David, was having a mental health crisis, he needed help that emergency responders weren't trained to give. He's hurting himself. We can't contain him. The 47-year-old with a history of mental illness and drug use jumped into the Washington Channel and died while EMTs called for police assistance. They should have been able to call specialized behavioral health teams trained to step in to exactly these situations. But we discovered those teams don't exist. That potentially could have made an impact on not only his life, but probably countless others as well. Six years ago, the D.C. Council unanimously passed a community safety law known as the NEAR Act. It required sweeping reforms, including the creation of community crime prevention teams, police and behavioral health specialists who would travel together for cases exactly like David Griffin's, where mental health, drug use and homelessness were all factors. But a recent investigation by D.C.'s auditor found that the city failed to create the teams mandated by law. Knowing that these teams have not been formed, that they are not putting the people out into the community um, as they should, I'm sort of speechless, you know, because I don't know <laughs> how you get away with these type of things. Not only were the community crime prevention teams never created, we discovered that the mayor's NEAR Act website claims they have been fully funded and are operational. They are claiming to the public that this program that might have saved your dad is in the community and it doesn't even exist. It's, it's a lie. How can you blatantly lie and get away with it? And, you know, there's no consequences for that. I don't, I do not understand. I don't. Neither does Georgetown law professor and former deputy chief at the U.S. Department of Justice, Christy Lopez. You don't really get to unilaterally decide um, that you've complied with the law when you very clearly haven't. The mayor has publicly claimed she created her own version of the teams that satisfy the law. But Lopez and the auditor's report say that's not how it works and that the mayor's claim is not accurate and her version of the teams do not meet the requirement of the law. D.C. Council member Kenyon McDuffie authored the NEAR Act. What's the public to think when the government isn't enforcing the very rules that it's established? In this case, uh, we uh, created and passed uh, one of the most uh, significant laws to address crime prevention and intervention, uh, and it's not yet been fully implemented. Whose yeah. job is it to implement? Well, it is the job of the executive branch agencies to do so. Who would that be? Uh, well, here's what I'm not going to do. I don't want to point fingers. What the public doesn't want is for people who are in elected leaders uh, across the District of Columbia to point fingers. What they want is action. They do want accountability, though. How much more difficult is it going to be to get it enacted when the administration has it on its website that it's already enacted? And, and frankly, uh, I've asked that question in oversight. Uh, what was the answer you got? Uh, well, that they think that they fully implemented it. I disagree. We asked the mayor to sit down with us and talk about why her administration is claiming community crime prevention teams exist when they don't. Her office did not respond to multiple requests. Not getting answers is something Alja Griffin says she's used to, waiting since March for someone from the administration to answer questions about mistakes made by 911 leading up to her father's death. She says it's hard not to think about what might have been had laws been followed and mistakes not repeated. If the work had been done so long ago, all of the lives that have been lost from that point on could have potentially uh, been saved.